I was to mention that I also chaired the Building Contracts Committee for Construction. I think that might uh, drop a few, uh, uh, might make you more aware of what we do and who we are. Uh, the GCC for many will occupy a special place in your hearts and for others to think you sometimes a, a, a walk on apart from Dante's Inferno, but we are um, more or less responsible for construction procurement under the Exchequer Capital Program, so public works contracts, the pre-qualification questionnaires, the ITTs, all those things uh, come through the Government Contracts Committee, uh, which I chair and are published then through the Office of Government Procurement. So we are Looking at the whole area, it's, it's heartening to see so many people in the room here today. Uh, if I had adopted or set out to adopt a, a strategy for BIM in the public sector two years ago, I think people would have laughed at me, to say the least. Uh, people had a lot more pressing problems on their hands, but it's wonderful to see growth and enthusiasm and energy back in the industry again. Um, you're going to hear presentations later on around where, how BIM has been adopted across the public sector. It hasn't been centrally coordinated in any sense, um, but there's a huge enthusiasm to adopt it. There is an informal group meeting, and I, I'm trying to set out uh, where we see structures and so on moving forward. Uh, but across the public sector, people are talking, they're sharing information, and, and we're hoping to formalise that as part of this strategy as well. So the strategy really it's been bubbling away in the background for quite some time, but we decided we would formalise the process. Uh, recently, the, the, the establishment of the National Bin Council, um, which, I, which I am a member, uh, has, has given me some sense that we need to uh, put a, a focus on this. Um, we are obviously more concerned with the much broader picture of procurement, but for us, BIM is a, is a, is a really good fit Public works contracts, the ethos of them, um, more comprehensive design up front, better analysis of risk, and all those things. So, BIM is, if, we have, if BIM had been more developed in 2007, I think the public works contract adoption process would have gone a lot smoother. But uh, technology wasn't available at that point in time to the extent that it is. So, uh, I was talking to Alan before the event, and I just want to can the, the room. There will not be any exclusive today. I won't be announcing that we'll all be adopting BIM by 2020 or 2018 or whatever people might like. Um, what we are setting out is a roadmap, really, taking into account, and I noticed the, the first one with David Brown, it, it's something that we have to be mindful of, being a large client and multifaceted and huge range of projects. We do have to take into consideration the state of readiness in the industry. Um, obviously at the top tier in contracting and in the, the consultancy space, <coughs> it's well adopted. Uh, big projects are adopted, and as well, we'll hear from later on, the children's hospital and so on. But we have to look at the middle and the lower tiers as well. And we have to give people time and I suppose a, a vision of you know, how they're going to fit into the picture. So that's what the strategy will be about. More importantly, it's also to establish the standards and the, the, the means of procurement that uh, people will follow right across the public sector. And I see a huge advantage in the, in the National BIM Council and having a uh, public sector voice there, and I'm not the only public sector representative, but also representatives from the construction industry and private clients, uh, where we can seek to try and get some sort of an alignment across the industry so we don't break everybody's heart looking for a different approach on the procurement side or indeed under, under contract. Uh, some of the key challenges I see, and I'm not in any way uh, in, uh, competent, is what is level two? Uh, we've had lots of discussion around that and I'm, I think we need to get to that point. That's a clear requirement from us as a client if we're going to set that as a standard. But we need to be very clear what in level two is. Uh, we need to get some clarity from Cross industry, what the understanding of that is, and again, excuse me, excuse me, maybe this is something that has been addressed, but I, I get a sense that it isn't quite there yet. Other challenges we see are um, not, as, as, as David O'Connell mentioned, it's not about the, uh, the technology, it's about the people, it's about trying to persuade our colleagues in the public service, the people who are commissioning the buildings at whatever level they're at, that this has an advantage to them. 
many won't necessarily appreciate the asset information model as being something that's a wonderful thing to have, particularly if you're managing a two-classroom school in the middle of the countryside. But uh, we, nonetheless, we, we need to get that message across to people that this is worth doing, it has efficiencies, uh, but more importantly, we're left with something that actually is there, it's tangible and can be used to manage property a very large state portfolio into the future. So in terms of the timeline, we've, we've started a consultation process. We hope shortly to publish what I would describe as a statement of intent, for want of a better word. Um, that will be out there for consultation. Um, we'll be working closely with colleagues on the National Boom Council, but also with the CIC to develop a, a, a submission that we put to government. We haven't quite decided what way we're going to approach government on this. There is a, an action in the Action Plan for Jobs to see a BIM adoption strategy for the public sector. Uh, so we will we'll certainly be meeting that requirement uh, under the Action Plan for Jobs. But it's a question of what level of mandate do we require. Um, the way you would see it manifest itself is through the Capital Works Management Framework, through amendments to those documents, uh, scope of service requirements, and so on and so forth. So there's an awful lot of work to be done uh, in the detail part. And this is, I mentioned a, a group that are meeting somewhat informally at the moment, but we hope to formalize that group as a, <coughs> a sort of an advisory group to the Government Contracts Committee on the technical aspects of it, where it should go, what sort of standards we should be adopting, um, and that will be formalized as part of the strategy as well. So uh, I can't put timelines on anything. I've learned in the job five years, I've learned <coughs> one thing, and that is committing to timelines in the environment in which we operate, so political climate and so on and so forth, very difficult. So uh, what I can say is the, the, the statement of intent will be published very shortly, uh, within the month, I hope. Um, and that will give people an opportunity to see what we're thinking, at the very least, and may answer some questions Thank you very much for the opportunity. Unfortunately, I can't stay for the, for the morning, but I, I know that Suzanne and Alan will 